February 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 15 and 16 from the Old Testament. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. They said, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army he has thrown into the sea, and his chosen officers were drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the abundance of your majesty you have overthrown those who rise up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils the waters were piled up. The flowing water stood upright like a heap and the deep waters were solidified in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will chase, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire will be satisfied on them, I will draw my sword, my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath, and the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, fearful in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. By your loyal love you will lead the people whom you have redeemed. You will guide them by your strength to your holy dwelling place. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will seize the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom will be terrified. Trembling will seize the leaders of Moab, and the inhabitants of Canaan will shake. Fear and dread will fall on them. By the greatness of your arm they will be as still as stone. Until your people pass by, O Lord, until the people whom you have bought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place you made for your residence, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established, the Lord will reign forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh came with his chariots and his footmen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the Israelites walked on dry land in the middle of the sea. Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a hand drum in her hand, and all the women went after her with hand drums and with dances. Miriam sang in response to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Then Moses led Israel to journey away from the Red Sea. They went out to the desert of Shur, walked for three days into the desert, and found no water. Then they came to Merah, but they were not able to drink the waters of Merah, because they were bitter. That is why its name was Merah. So the people murmured against Moses, saying, What can we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When Moses threw it into the water, the water became safe to drink. There the Lord made for them a binding ordinance, and there he tested them. He said, If you will diligently obey the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and pay attention to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, then all the disease that I brought on the Egyptians I will not bring on you, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells of water and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the water. When they journeyed from Elam, the entire company of Israelites came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month, after their exodus from the land of Egypt. The entire company of Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this desert to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people will go out and gather the amount for each day, so that I may test them. Will they walk in my law or not? On the sixth day they will prepare what they bring in, and it will be twice as much as they gather every other day. Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your murmurings against the Lord. As for us, what are we, that you should murmur against us? Moses said, You will know this when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and bread in the morning to satisfy you, because the Lord has heard your murmurings that you are murmuring against him. As for us, what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole community of the Israelites, Come before the Lord, because he has heard your murmurings. As Aaron spoke to the whole community of the Israelites, and they looked towards the desert, there the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, I have heard the murmurings of the Israelites. Tell them, During the evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be satisfied with bread, so that you may know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening the quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning a layer of dew was all around the camp. When the layer of dew had evaporated there on the surface of the desert was a thin, flaky substance, thin like frost on the earth. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? Because they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you for food. This is what the Lord has commanded. Each person is to gather from it what he can eat, an omer per person, according to the number of your people. Each one will pick it up for whoever lives in his tent. The Israelites did so, and they gathered some more, some less. When they measured with an omer, the one who gathered much had nothing left over, and the one who had gathered little lacked nothing. Each one gathered what he could eat. Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some kept part of it until morning, and it was full of worms and began to stink, and Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it each morning, each person according to what he could eat, and when the sun got hot, it would melt. And on the sixth day they gathered twice as much food, two omers per person, and all the leaders of the community came and told Moses. He said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a time of sensation from work, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Whatever you want to bake, bake today. Whatever you want to boil, boil today. Whatever is left, put aside for yourselves to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, just as Moses had commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the area. Six days you will gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather it, but they found nothing. So the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to obey my commandments and my instructions? See, because the Lord is giving you the Sabbath, that is why he is giving you food for two days on the sixth day. Each of you stay where you are. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed and was white, and it tasted like wafers with honey. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Fill an omer with it to be kept for generations to come, so that they may see the food I fed you in the desert, when I brought you out from the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put in it an omer full of manna, and place it before the Lord to be kept for generations to come. Just as the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony for safekeeping. Now the Israelites ate manna forty years, until they came to a land that was inhabited. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. 
Now an omer is one-tenth of an ephah. God, today I just want to worship you and praise you and fall more in love with you. I loved that worship song at the beginning. I, I wish the Israelites could have held on to that while they were in the desert. Um, I want to hold on to it in every part of my entire day. Every day I go to bed thinking, oh my gosh, I can't be more in love with God than I already am. And then I wake up the next day and lo and behold, I am. And I think it's a, a, a great way to teach me how your love is endless uh, and how I can feel that as I just sink deeper and deeper and deeper into your love. Uh, one of my favorite books by uh, Francis Chan, Pastor Francis Chan, uh, talks about falling madly in love with you. Uh, to me, that is just uh, an amazing book that talks about this relationship that we have uh, with you. And I love a quote from there, and I, I think it definitely applies to the situation we're watching the Israelites in, uh, and definitely applies to our own life. The core problem isn't the fact that we're lukewarm, half-hearted, or stagnant Christians. The crux of it all is why we are this way, and is because we have an inaccurate view of God. We see him as a benevolent being who is satisfied when people manage to fit him into their lives in a small way. We forget that God never had an identity crisis. He knows that he's great and deserves to be the center of our lives. And I think about that when I'm reading and will continue reading about your people wandering around in the desert. And then I think about my own life and how I become lukewarm and half-hearted and want you to fit into my life instead of the other way around. And so today I just, I just want to be intentional. I just ask prayers for everybody listening that we're just intentional, that we just are joyful today and we worship you and we just love you. You know those feelings you get when you're first in a relationship and everything is fabulous and sparkly and Disney fireworks. God, today I just want to remember that feeling I had when I first realized that I was falling in love with you. And I want to go through my day that way. And I pray for everybody who's listening that they can go through this day just remembering this amazing love that you have for us. And, and you made us. Uh, you chose us, you help guide us, and you love us. <laughs> you don't fit into our lives, God. We fit into yours. And for that, I am incredibly thankful. In your son's name we pray. Amen.